And I'd say thank you very much again. It's very interesting. Um, now we go over to our third talk. Um, the next talk is by Benjamin Valentin from MLPR Consulting. And uh, Benjamin is also an embedded software engineer and uh, working with Riot for quite a while now and is also a very active maintainer. And he is uh, now going to share some of his experiences with uh, Six Lopa networking. Um, and in particular, he is talking about IPv6 uh, stateless auto configuration for wired IoT networks. So if you're ready, please go ahead. Yes, I hope you can, can see my slides. Yes, we can see them fine. Ah, great. Um, yeah, so this is about uh, IPv6 uh, subnet auto configuration. Um, it's not not on six low pen. It's uh, just ordinary IPv6. Um, but I will also give a bit of an introduction to some features of IPv6 uh, for those who are not uh, yet aware of those. Um, but first, a bit of an introduction uh, about myself. I'm an embedded uh, software engineer at MLPA Consulting. Uh, we do um, mostly projects for industrial customers. They want some condition monitoring, wear analysis and such. And we can give them a full stack solution where we do um, the uh, data analysis and data gathering with, um, with uh, embedded nodes, but also the front end and back end and yeah, whole stuff. But I'm, I'm mostly involved in the, in the embedded, I'm only involved in the embedded team. So that's what it's about. Um, so, um, for, for some projects, we use uh, wired sensor networks uh, also, um, and they work well if the installation is fixed and if there's uh, nothing changing and it should be uh, robust against um, against uh, yeah influence from from outside or um, disturbances in the RF spectrum basically. Um, and since we are deploying a homogeneous network uh, that is uh, only com consisting of our nodes, we can also use uh, custom protocols. Uh, there's this uh, software Ethernet solution called uh, Dose, uh, which is quite quite useful. Uh, thanks uh, to Jürgen for that. Um, it is basically um, emulating Ethernet over UART um, and uses uh, the CAN, uh, CAN level shifters or the CAN FU uh, to create a bus. Um, so um, everyone can write on a shared bus and um, they will receive like in the very first iterations of Ethernet. Um, and it only requires a single pair of differential wires, so it's easy to deploy and it works with any MCU that has UART. Um, so usually you don't need a routing algorithm if you only have a single bus, but sometimes the topology is a bit more advanced. You have branches uh, because uh, what you want to wire up uh, just goes in two directions, uh, and then you need routing. Uh, but um, yeah, we, we don't need any any dynamic routing algorithm. Um, it's, it's, it's always always the same network. Um, and we don't want to manually configure any any subnets or so. Um, so first, let's take a step back uh, to look how it was with IPv4, um, because usually on IPv4, subnets are configured by an administrator. Um, if you are not doing that, uh, that you may see in some home networks, you have uh, two routers, and the second router will just do another NUT uh, after the first router. Yeah, that's automatic configuration and it works for HTTP, but yeah, not much else. You don't want that. So what you usually do then is to bridge everything on layer two. Um, so um, yeah, just uh, just a switch, and that works well if you have a switch network. So um, the there you can you can know okay behind this port, uh, this MAC address is up behind this port, and um, if I want to reach this this node, I just send it out through this port and. Next router will do the same, and this works uh, good. Uh, but as soon as have, you have some bus-like network, like a wireless network, uh, things get a bit more problematic. Uh, and then you have to do uh, four address mode, basically, where you include the sender address, uh, the sender, the sending router address, uh, the destination router address, and the destination node address to actually route this over this wireless link which is not nice. And if you have a second pair of wireless links, you even need six address mode, and then you just want IPv6. Um, there, because um, IPv6, as you know, has a quite large address, address space, 128 bits. Uh, but that's not only to address every grain of sand in the world. Uh, it's actually to enable auto configuration and easy subnet creation. Uh, so we have this uh, stateless address auto configuration where um, a node just receives a prefix um, through router advertisements. 
and then choose its uh, the the interface ID on its own. And because it is uh, 64 bits, collisions are unlikely. And uh, usually, this is also based on on the MAC address um, or layer two address that should also be only unique on unique on the link. Um, if you have a if you have a IPv6 uplink from your um, internet provider, um, you usually get a 60, uh, 56 uh, subnet. So you have uh, 60, 50, uh, 65 fixed bits, 56 fixed, fixed bits. Sorry, <laughs> uh, but you only need 64 for uh, Slack. So you have eight free bits um, that you can use for subnetting. Uh, so you may wonder, um, yeah, do I do create these subnets manually? Is there something like stateless subnet auto configuration too? Um, yeah, um, let's let's get to that later. But first, uh, um, let's let's first um, get, get a bit more into the details of, of IPv6. So maybe some of you may already be well familiar with that, but um, just to just to recap, uh, there is uh, IC in PV6, uh, which is um, yeah, usually familiar because of, of the ping command, but it's actually more than that. Um, it's uh, for all kinds of control messages on IPv6 it's used. It replaces the address re res resolution protocol. Instead, we are doing uh, neighbor advertisements now on neighbor solicitation. So uh, if I want to send something to a, to a, another host in the network that is on the same link, I would, I would send a neighbor, solici neighbor solicitation message asking who that address is with the destination, uh, obviously, uh, address to that uh, address. <laughs> and the, if, if this node exists, it will answer. And then uh, I can I can look at the layer two address and store that in my neighbor information base. So the next time I want to reach a node, I don't have to ask again. I still have it cached. Um, and um, that works for the local network or, or rather the local link. Um, if I want to uh, go beyond the link, I need a router. And uh, there's the router, the router solicitation message, which just asks if there is any router around that can give me some information. And the router will also periodically um, do these router advertisements if it's not asked. Um, it says basically I'm a router, I can do routing, <laughs> um, forwarding messages. And uh, if it can say it has a, it usually will say it has a default route and that is valid for a certain period of time. Uh, and it can have uh, several options. There's the prefix information option that says, um, yeah, I have I have this prefix, this subnet, uh, this network belongs to this prefix. Uh, you can basically choose an address from this and um, yeah, you can do that. And uh, there's also the, the root information option that basically says, yeah, um, I'm a router. If you want to reach this network, um, uh, you can you can you can use me to do that. Um, so uh, I mean, if it's if it says it's a default router, it will it will be basically responsible for any any uh, Route that's not the current uh, network, but it can also be more specific with this root information option. That becomes more important uh, later. So um, let's get to the uh, to the uh, method that uh, can be used for auto configuration. Um, uh, basically, it's, it's it takes that back. We need this uh, sixty four bits for the for the slack. Um, and if we can create these subnets hierarchically, like we have a network on a tree, uh, which is a common topology, uh, we don't have loops or such, um, it would be nice to have these subnets also organized hierarchically. And um, of course, we must make sure that no prefix is used twice. Um, so uh, now you may ask where, where to get a prefix. I mean, usually you get a prefix through router advertisements, and uh, router advertisements are usually just 64 bits. Uh, prefixes, um, so you can ask uh, the the router uh, with via DHCP v6. Uh, there you can ask for a larger prefix, uh, or if you if you configure the, if you control the router, um, that is your yeah like like us, we can just uh, configure RedVD to advertise a larger prefix. But if you want to do that, if you want to do that at home with your Fritz box, you can ask it to uh, give you a larger prefix via DHCP v6. Um, so let's start with the simplest um, simplest um, case. We have a linear topology that means uh, the tree is, well, I said it's a skinny tree because there are no branches. Uh, and uh, that means uh, on each level of the tree, there's only a single uh, routing node. There, there all, other, all other nodes are leaf nodes. Uh, the routers can have as many uh, downstream interfaces as they, as they want. And there doesn't need to be any um, 
coordination between the routers uh, outside of the standard ICMP v6 messages. Um, so how do we create a prefix um, for the subnet? Um, if we receive a prefix on the upstream interface, we just um, yeah we just create new downstream prefixes from that, and for each um, for each downstream network, we um, now we, we consume as many bits as we need to um, to display the the downstream the number of downstream networks. So if we have um, Two downstream networks. We do two downstream networks. We need two bits. If we have uh, four downstream networks, we need three bits, and we just count and, uh, and shift that to the to the least significant bit position in the subnet. And uh, yeah, there is there is actually uh, this is already merged in Riot, and it can be activated with the uh, GNSC APv6 Auto Subnet Simple module. Uh, let's let's show you how this works. So this is this linear network. Um, we have these uh, these three level of routers. And the first router will get this uh, 60 uh, bit prefix uh, on DB8. And it, it has one downstream network, so it only has to consume a single bit. It sets the single bit, it counts to one basically, uh, to create a downstream network and uh, shifts that uh, one to the 60th position. So it creates this 8 slash 61 subnet. Next router will do the same, creates this uh, C slash 62 network, and then we have a E slash 63 network. Um, and if we have multiple downstream interfaces, it works the same. And now we actually see that we are counting. Uh, we count here from one to two. Um, and uh, so we have two networks. We could even create a third network without consuming more bits. Uh, that's just simple, simple um, yeah, counting, basically. <laughs> um, but it's actually not. Uh, yeah, let's go, let's go back to the, to the linear network, because there is one, one more thing we have to take care of. Uh, let's just look at these three nodes uh, for the example. So we have a uh, node A, which is the router, routing node. We have the uh, node B, which is our our node on the uh, upstream network, and the node C, which is on the downstream network. And uh, let's see how they communicate. Um, first, the the upstream router will send its router advertisement for the newly created subnet. It says here is this uh, subnet uh, eight slash sixty one. Can use a use an address from that. And node C will just do that. And now node C wants to ping node B uh, for some reason, which just wants to send a message to node B and expect, expect a reply. Um, this node C is in DB8 0 60. And uh, this is outside of the uh, 8 61 network. So it must use the default router to reach this node. We'll send it to the node, node B because it's the default router. Uh, sorry, we'll send it to node A because it's the default router. Fort router forwards the message uh, first does its uh, neighbor solicitation because it's never seen uh, node B. It asks who is node B. Uh, node B answers here I am, and then it gets the request from node C. And now node B wants to reply, and it sees the address. It's uh, eight dash. Uh, it's uh, uh, in the subnet uh, zero dash dash sixty one because um, yeah, it's in the same subnet. Um, the, because the sub the subnet is actually yeah subnetwork of the pre, of the upper network, so it assumes it must be on link right because uh, all nodes are on the same link in the subnet. Um, it will broadcast the neighbor solicitation and get no reply because it's actually behind the router. So we have to do something else. We have to also send to the upstream network this uh, root information option where we say if you want to reach this downstream network, uh, I have a a better route than the default than the default route. Um, so this will this is this is what node A does. Uh, when it creates the subnet, it will say here if you want to reach the subnet, I got a better route than the default route. And if the node C now wants to send a reply, it will see okay, um, it would be in the in the in my network, but actually I have a I have a route that has a stronger match because it is matching 61 bits instead of 60 bits of this um, of this address. So I will actually send it to node a that will forward it then, and no, A will forward it, or he has the uh, address in the um, neighbor information base uh, cache and doesn't need to do any any address resolution and just sends it. And yeah, the link is is working. At root. Um, yeah, that was with uh, with one router on a on a on a lay, uh, on a on a segment or on a on a link, uh, but in reality. It, Sometimes also happens that there are multiple routers on a 
on the link. Um, so now uh, still works the same, but now the routers actually have to coordinate to make sure that um, no prefix gets used twice. Unfortunately, uh, this is not any more uh, totally standard solution because I didn't find anything um, that is uh, yeah specified for that. So I we'll just use the very simple a custom protocol that is just UDP message that gets sent out. Uh, you kept that really simple, just a single byte will be sent. Uh, basically, the routers will each announce the number of subnets they want to create. And um, then, um, yeah, the other routers um, yeah, count up, count that information. And uh, they also have a shared, shared um, global order because they all have distinct layer two addresses. Um, so we can use this to determine where to start uh, the new subnet. And yeah, we also have to remove um, invalid prefixes later if a new router shows up, like it just took longer to boot or something. Uh, but we can just do that by um, sending out this um, uh, root information option, uh, this prefix information option with left time, left time zero. Um, yeah, and that's the, that can be activated with this uh, auto subnets module. Um, yeah, um, also the, uh, yeah, this is something I didn't say because um, you may have noticed that it sends these root advertisements upstream uh, saying I'm not a router, which means it has a lifetime of zero, but the options can have individual lifetimes. So the root information option can have a lifetime that is distinct from the lifetime of the of the yeah, default router uh, information, basically. So it can have a default root of lifetime zero, which means it's not a default root, but it can have a root information option with a lifetime of the actual prefix lifetime. But yeah, let's look at this. Um, this is what such a topology looks like. Um, again, we have our our multiple um, downstream downstream networks that are basically just counting up. Um, but as you see, there are multiple uh, routers on each level. Um, so they can have then multiple subnets. And how do they arrive at this information? Um, yeah, it's it's actually also not not complicated. Um, basically, they, they just announced the number of subnets they want to create. Um, here, I, I added three three routers. Um, um, layer two address is the same, uh, save for the last byte, so it's a bit easier to uh, see what's going on. The first router says, I want to create two subnets, and it has the um, layer two address 23, which comes before F6 and comes before 42. So. Um, the other nodes know, okay, uh, in total, I mean, the, the, the other nodes each, each want to create one subnet. So after this first message, the other nodes know that there must be uh, three subnets in total and also know that these, these two other subnets should come before their own subnet. Um, the next node sends its, its uh, request, it wants to create a single subnet. First node sees it, now also knows, okay, there must be three subnets in total but the address of this other node is behind my address. So it will, uh, I would, will not change my index and the same goes for the last node. Um, and then if the, when the last node finally sends its uh, request or announcement, um, the, the other nodes will now know that there are in total four subnets. And they also know that the last node comes before the second node, but uh, after the um, first node. So now each node knows the total number of uh, synchronous uh, of, of networks and also the uh, position where they're in and uh, yeah created like basically like like this again it's now on a, on a total uh, global scale yeah. and uh, actually that's that's it already um, I, I see I might even have time for a demo uh, if you want to want to see that um, so I just I just do that um, and then Come back to questions, or I don't know if I, if I have time for a demo. But if you yes, want, we, sure. we do have some time, so please okay. go ahead. Um, so let's share, let's try that. Share in the application and this one. You should see now a few terminals. Um, they're all running uh, this generic networking subnet, not subnet, subnets examples, and I've created a few, um, well, I've created a few uh, top bridges uh, that I want to uh, bridge now. So I, here I create between uh, this first bridge uh, link 
And as you can see, I have now uh, two interfaces here that already got an address by, um, by uh, RapidD and created one downstream prefix. And I can create here the second, the second hop here. And then I can, oh, well, it's actually B and E, so it's, yeah, whatever. So I created here the second hop and uh, prefix. And I can create now. Now see. Uh, now we have a single, a single router on this link. But we can add another router on this link because we have now this uh, general module, and this will cause the old prefix to get invalidated. So here we now have uh, not, nothing yet. Now we get something, and um, uh, now you see we have a thirty sixty three prefix. And if you look here. We also got this and it also changed from, from C to A because, uh, yeah, the order changed to the, with the MAC addresses. And, uh, yeah, if you can just start another node, we also get its prefix. That is now uh, on the third level, basically, pre prefix, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. And, uh, yeah, now time for questions, I would I would say. All right, thank you very much. Is there any questions? Hmm. <laughs> so far, no questions. Um, I do have a practical question. When you talk about routers on the on the bus networks, does that mean that you have some selected nodes that simply have like two or three or more of these uh, can files connected? So mm -hmm. you have completely separated lines? Yes, exactly. All right. So your upper bound for for networks a router can can route is basically the number of URLs you have available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there's a question from Kristen. Um, what is the typical delay in these networks? Uh, do you mean delay introduced by routing? Uh, the, the question was more. Uh, the question. Sorry. Um, yep. Is there a delay in the negotiation process that allows the other networks that will now have to change their address to uh, exp kind of to wait for their prefixes to expire. I mean, those nodes have an announced route, uh, an, an announced prefix with a given lifetime, mm -hmm. and will be taken away with before that lifetime uh, expires. Mm -hmm. Can that be kind of slowed down so that the other networks will only get their prefix once the once the first ones can regularly retire their old one? Yeah, that would be that would be a nice addition, basically. Um, unfortunately, this is uh, yeah not so not so easy to implement with the current stack. I mean, they we don't really have um, we don't really have deprecated prefixes um, in in Riot. Um, I mean, we, we we would have two prefixes basically, but then we would um, <laughs> yes we do says Amiri. Maybe I didn't didn't find it yet, um, but. Um, the problem problem is basically that that I want this prefix that is removed to be not used anymore because there is a second subnet with the same prefix. So I actually want to have it gone and um, as soon as possible. And um, yeah, the um, I think there there is no mechanism yet to do just that. I can could expire it, but also then we would have to uh, allocate space for more addresses. And I mean, in, in this case, it is um, usually just um, uh, happening on boot up time of the whole system. So uh, there is not really much going on. And I preferred the fast uh, setup of the network to some some legacy uh, addresses, basically, or some deprecated addresses. I mean, just uh yeah getting rid of them as quickly as possible and then start with the application that was was my idea uh because it's yeah the delay will usually uh, not be so significant all right uh, we have one other question from jürgen jürgen please go ahead uh yeah maybe i've missed that bit but how do you ensure that addresses don't collide if you slice out a subnet for for instance if you uh, um, if your router is on the slash 60 net and so the slash 60 net also has local addresses how do we ensure that if you're uh, delegating a slash 61 net mm -hmm. that those ip addresses aren't uh, colliding 
Um, the good thing is that on the with Slack, they will only touch the last 64 bits of the of the address. So the uh, other the remaining bits in the prefix will always stay zero. And I mean on the same on the same uh, as, as long as they if they are multiple routes on the same level, there's the synchronization um, that is taking place. But the there will no there will be no node on its own be touching the first 64 bits uh, when, when they're doing Slack. Ah, okay. I see. Yep. Thank you. Okay, we have another question from uh, Martin. Martin, please go yeah, ahead. Um, you said that uh, the, uh, the 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 um, uh, the the routing information option is sent in the last router advertisement. Um, is there any uh, mechanism for how to update the route when the route uh, approaches its end of lifetime, or? Yeah. Or it's, it's actually you... okay. Sorry, it, it's actually sent each time we get the root information. Uh, each time we get the upstream um, upstream prefix information option. So each time uh, we we create, do this prefix. So each there is this hook in the in the uh, this in the prefix information option uh, receive uh, function, yeah. and that will then trigger this uh, um, subnet creation, which triggers the uh, downstream prefix information option and upstream root information option. And if okay. the root changes, we also send the root information option uh, of lifetime zero with the old root. OK, so basically, OK, it's uh, it's just a confusing fusion for, from my side that we called in Riot the router advertisement at last, lifetime zero, the last router advertisement, mm -hmm. but there are more sent, OK. <laughs> Okay, there's one last question from Christian. Uh, what's wrong with DHCP prefix delegation? Yeah, it doesn't solve routing. Uh, it just it just gives you a prefix, and um, then you still don't know how to route the prefixes. And also, you don't have this nice property that um, the prefixes are hi hierarchical. So uh, in this case, you only have to have to maintain uh, two routing table entries: uh, one for the uh, default route and one for the now yeah, one for now yeah, one for each downstream network, basically. But uh, you you don't need to have a entry for each network, each subnet, only for your um, local downstream subnets because you know each subnet will be included in the uh, well uh, it will be included in the other subnet that is starting with the same prefix. And also DHCP v6 doesn't give you routing. Um, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Then uh, thank you very much again. Very interesting.